Performances. What do you think about his recent performances? Uh, you know, I've watched all of Tito's fights. It's hard for me to remember. You know, he's he's a Hall of Famer. He won his world championship. I, I don't dispute his career at all, but but he wasn't me. If I would have been given my opportunity before 2005, way back when he did, he never would have been the champion. And neither would the guy with the mohawk and the tattoos on his skull. I would have beaten all of those guys, and those were great fighters, but they weren't me. What are you expecting in this fight against uh, Tito Ortiz? What are you expecting from him? I don't have a lot of expectations, man. Eventually my music will hit those speakers and I'll make that walk. And when that ref says fight, I promise you I will. And what happens after that, we're all going to find out together. Is he making too big of a deal about uh, when you pinned him on his birthday back 20 years ago? Yeah, I was flattered by that. I was flattered he even remembered it. I've never brought that up in my whole career. He brought it up, so I thought that it was fair game. But, uh, yeah, that meant something to me. I, Tito Ortiz had already been in the UFC, and a lot of people weren't following it back then. You know, back in the 90s, this is before the network deals and, and Big Fox and the exposure and ESPN, all this, all this other stuff. I was following it. My father was following it. We cared about it. We liked it, and it, it was a big deal to get matched up with Tito. It was, it was very exciting. I was flattered that he brought it up. What do you feel about facing him now? Do you, do you feel, are you, you know, are you happy you're getting this chance? How do you feel? Yeah, uh, you know, I wanted to fight Tito way back in the 90s, back when he was champion. There's only two divisions back then. Uh, I was a little small for the weight class, but that was the weight class. If you wanted to, to do this work, uh, they had light heavyweight and then they had heavyweight. When I finally got my opportunity, more divisions had been added, including middleweight. And uh, I didn't think the match would ever happen. I thought it was going to be something I was just going to have to tell my buddies, man, I could have always beaten that guy, and they just have to take my word for it. But I was either right when I told all my peers that, or I was wrong. But we are going to find out on the 21st. Easy way or hard way, either way, we're going to get the answer. Like guys said, how important is Say again? With that said, how important is this victory and this fight for you? Man, right they're now? all important to me. I, I, I like to win. I'm a competitor. I've, I've never had a fight that I, I didn't take seriously and that uh, I was willing to do anything within the rules or outside the rules to win. <laughs> Jill, you were one of the faces of the UFC for a very long time. You're wearing the Bellator, you know, black and red now. How does that feel? Uh, you know, I'm a fight fan, man. I, I watch when Mayweather fights. I don't know who the promoter is. I watch the big UFC fights. I watch the Bellator fights. I even watch WrestleMania. I usually go live. So, uh, I, I like the competition. I like the production value. Uh, it, it feeds my ego. I could drag Tito outside right now and beat him up, but I would much rather wait until January 21st when millions of people can tune in. He says this is uh, probably his last fight. He's going to retire after this fight. Is there any added meaning in that for you that this is, you know, one of the, one of the greatest uh, two of fighters of all time for last fight? Well, he he acts like it's his choice. He acts like he's not the first guy that I've retired. Uh, it's kind of a foregone conclusion. There's, there's been many other people in my career that after they get out of there, they say, I'm done. Tito's just going to be one more. Chell, the two of you have never been friends. Why do you think he takes you so personally, everything you do so personally? Does it really go back to that fight in Bakersfield? Uh, you know, it could have. I, I didn't know Tito remembered it. I, I really thought that that was, that was a cool thing, you know, for a guy that went on and, and got in the Hall of Fame. Uh, I, I don't really know what's in Tito's head, um, and I'm not too concerned with it. All, all I can do is take care of myself. I've worked hard. I listen to my coaches. I still got a weigh-in in front of me, so I got to go focus on that when I leave here. But, uh, I mean, it's, it's business as usual, and they could put Tito in there or they could replace him between now and then. I will be ready to fight. You've never been as nice as uh, in the lead up to this fight. Are you trying not to talk smack and not to get under his skin? No, I just I just don't need Tito in this fight. You know, most guys need a dance partner, myself included. But th there is no bigger fight than a grudge match, except for a comeback fight. This is a comeback fight. At the same time, it's a retirement fight. The story tells itself. I've got nothing to sell here. This is the first time I'm not I'm not in on the pay per view. This isn't on pay per view. It's live, free, and only on Spike TV. I have nothing to sell anybody if I wanted. I'm telling people. I'm giving them an opportunity. The greatest fighter of all time, Chael P. Sonnen versus Tito Ortiz. It's legend. That's just in fairness. He is. It's all going down. It's going down Saturday night and it's free. Nine in the east, six in the west. How you doing with weight? I got about uh, I got about 11 pounds still. Got about 11 pounds. So I, I, I'm going to have some uncomfortableness in the next 48 hours, but I did it to myself. <laughs> I, I have plenty of notice. I got nobody to blame but this handsome fellow. How do you up? like that? We'll see. I don't know if I can get to a sauna. I'll definitely I'll be sweating somewhere. Is there a certain way you would like to win? Say again? Is there a certain way you would like to win? Uh, no, I mean, I'm going to go out there and fight hard. I, I look for performance more than I look for outcome. Uh, one of my best wrestling matches I ever had, I, I, I lost the match, but the, the performance was great. And I'm just focused on, uh, on performing and uh, competing hard, keeping a high pace. A couple of positions I want to stay out of and uh, stay out of those positions and then see where the night goes. Can you guys be friends after this? 
I got. No, I hope Tito has a wonderful life. I got nothing against him, and I, I also don't dispute his career. I think he could, he could beat everybody in the world. I think he fought all the right guys. I think his place in the Hall of Fame uh, is very deserving. My my one and only comment is I could have beaten him, and I could have beaten all those other guys. I didn't get my shot until I was 33 years old. I left a lot on the table. I was fighting down at the dog park for nothing against a lot tougher guys than Tito was fighting on pay per view. Is anything going to change the outcome from what would have happened then to now? Is it going to be the same fight? It would have been like it's the same fight. It's that we're the same guys doing the same sport and the same rules. The weight class is a little bit different, but uh, when I started fight, we didn't even have weight. I don't know anything about these weigh-ins and rules and wearing gloves. I mean, th this is all part of today's <laughs> pussified society, man. That's not that's not where I grew up. In the mean streets of Westland, Oregon, you do not ask a guy what he weighs if he bumps into you. <laughs> One or two more guys. <laughs> you said you were jealous. Uh, what do you mean? Of his fame, his success? Yeah, you know, T Tito got... I wanted to be in the UFC. I wanted to be in, in mixed martial arts. Bellator wasn't around. Uh, Pride wasn't around then, uh, just to set a time frame for you. Uh, Tito had already been there. And I stayed in college. I pursued uh, NCAA goals and Olympic aspirations. And uh, he left school six months after I pinned him. He was the UFC world champion. And uh, he was very good. Again, I don't dispute his, his level of success, but I, I, he was not me. I beat him in the amateurs. I beat guys better than him in the practice room. I knew exactly where I stood. There was one guy in the world that could whip my ass, and his name was not Tito Ortiz. It was Randy Couture, and that was the only guy. After Tito Ortiz, what are your future plans I will be fighting Vandalay Silva the next time I see Vandalay Silva. I assume somebody will try to sanction that and put it in a ring. And I don't say that with any bravado, and he will tell you the same thing. If Vandalay was here right now, I would be fighting Vandalay right now. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.